Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, the government shutdown came to an end and the nation averted default. That's October 11th to October 17th, or the shutdown edition, the end. Because Democrats and responsible Republicans came together, the first government shutdown in 17 years is now over. The first default in more than 200 years will not happen. On Friday, the president invited Senate Republicans to the White House for a meeting on ending the government shutdown and raising the debt ceiling. He then joined conference calls on the issue with governors and then with CEOs from across the country. As you all know, the economic effects of a shutdown are bad enough. The consequences of defaulting on our debt could be catastrophic. Later that day, the president heard from small business owners directly about how the government shutdown and the threat of the nation's default is having an impact on their business. The American people uh, are tired of governing by crisis, and it sounds like businesses are too. Everything being this ultimate contest every few weeks is what slows investment, It what slows what we do. We, we're all entrepreneurs here, we're very optimistic, we're taking risks, but it does tamp that down by having this be a constant fight and six weeks doesn't help. Later, the President First Lady invited Malala Yousafzai to the Oval Office for a signing of a proclamation in honor of the International Day of the Girl. They spent some time talking about her incredible journey from student to international symbol of equal rights. You are a perfect example of what this proclamation is about, which is how we can make sure that we're empowering young women everywhere. On Monday, the President visited Martha's Table, a volunteer organization that provides food to children and families in the Washington, D.C. area. It's where furloughed workers were using their time to pitch in and help. He bagged sandwiches, spooned out yogurt parfaits, and spoke on the ongoing shutdown in light of the debt ceiling debt. There are going to be differences between the parties. There are going to be differences in terms of budget priorities. But we don't need to inflict pain on the American people or risk uh, the possibility that America's full faith and credit is damaged uh, just because one side is not getting its way. On Tuesday, the President presented former U.S. Army Captain William Swenson the Medal of Honor for conspicuous gallantry for his courageous actions in Kunar Province, Afghanistan on September 8, 2009, while serving as an embedded trainer and mentor of the Afghan National Security Forces. I think our nation needs this ceremony today. In moments like this, Americans like Will remind us of what our country can be at its best, a nation of citizens who look out for one another, who meet our obligations to one another, not just when it's easy, but also when it's hard maybe especially when it's hard. Uh, Will, you're an example to everyone in this city uh, and to our whole country of the professionalism and patriotism that we should strive for, whether we wear uniform or not. Not just on particular occasions, but all the time. On Wednesday evening, the President spoke to reporters about the progress being made in Congress to avert an economic shutdown and reopen the government. Democrats and Republicans in the House still have an important vote to take. But I want to thank the leaders of both parties uh, for getting us to this point. Once this agreement arrives on my desk, I will sign it immediately. On Thursday morning, the federal government once again opened for business. And the vice president stopped by the William Jefferson Clinton Federal Building to welcome EPA workers back to work. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it. Happy birthday. Thank you so much for being here. Later that morning, the president spoke to the nation from the state dining room. So let's work together to make government work better. You don't like a particular policy? or a particular president, then argue for your position. Go out there and win an election. Push to change it, but don't break it. Don't break what our predecessors spent over two centuries building. That's not being faithful to what this country is about. The president then welcomed Prime Minister Enrico Letta of Italy to the Oval Office for a bilateral meeting, where they discussed promoting economic growth and new jobs, their support for the transatlantic trade and investment partnership, cooperation within NATO, and shared challenges in North Africa and the Middle East. To find out more information on any of these Let's Get Back to Work topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to WhiteHouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week.
say, God willing and the crick not rising, we won't go through it again. Thank you.